Hi, we're going to talk a little bit about one statistical analysis uh, uh, that uses the scatter plot to show its results. And the scatter plot can be easily demonstrated by the following way. The scatter plot is trying to show the relationship between two variables and it uses correlational data. Again, remember from previous things you've looked at, correlation does not mean that something caused something else, but sometimes we infer that relationship exists in a causal fashion. Let's take a look specifically at uh, how scatter plots are made. We've got a database that you'll be able to look at some of the real results here on the, on the PowerPoint. Let's say we looked at the relationship between suicides, and that's typically measured per 100,000, so we've got a suicide rate, and divorces. Well, what kind of data are we using? We're using data from the United States of America, and how in the world do we, we come up with the dots? Well, when we look at divorces, we'll find some state, for example, that has this measure on divorce. In other words, its divorce rate is relatively low, and we'll find that its suicide rate is relatively low. We take those two lines and crisscross them, and that gives us a dot. What's that dot mean? That dot represents a state's measure on both the variables of divorce and the variables of suicide. Let's say we find a state out here that has a divorce rate that's moderate, and we find that it has a suicide rate that's moderate. What do we do? We draw our lines where the two crisscross. That dot represents that state's measure on the variables of divorce rate and the measure of suicide. And we do that for all 50 states, and when, I'll show you the actual thing here in just a bit a minute. What we end up getting is a scatter plot that looks like that. Each dot represents what? Each dot represents its score of a particular state on the divorce rate of that state and the suicide rate of that state. Now, when you draw a circle around these things, you can see that there's a clear pattern. And that clear pattern, in this case, is what we call a positive correlation. Now, when I want to get more specific, there's a, a thing on the program I use in microcase called uh, the, the um, regression line, and when I hit that, I find a line that goes from lower left to upper right. Every time you see a scatter plot that has a line that goes from lower left to upper right, you know just by looking at it that it's a positive correlation. That means that as the divorce rate goes up, the suicide rate goes up. Right? And this happens to be based on real data that I'll show you more specifically here in this chart. Now let's look at this and test a hypothesis on this particular one. And one of the things we need to test that hypothesis is our, our p-value, so our probability, our p-value is 0 .000, and our r-value is 0 .667, and notice that's a positive. So let's go through what that means. First of all, from strictly a correlation point of view, it suggests that as suicide goes up, divorces go up about 67% as much. In other words, a fairly strong correlation between these two variables. It's not saying suicides cause divorces, it's not saying divorces cause suicide, it's saying that these two measures, which are both measures of, of dishevelment in a society, both go up together. And it's a positive correlation. Now let's turn this into a hypothesis. Our hypothesis would be, we think that as suicide rates go up, divorce rates are going to go up. We collect our data, we get this scatter plot, and my goodness, we say, well, it does seem to be true. And we ask the question, does the data go in the direction our hypothesis predicted? In other words, do divorces go up as suicides go up? Yes, they do. Then we have to say, is the probability 0.05 or less? And we look at our probability and we say, my goodness, it's a lot less than 0.05, meaning out of a thousand studies, this predicts we would never find this relationship by chance even one time. In other words, this is a significant correlation between the two. Do we accept or reject our hypothesis? We accept our hypothesis based upon that idea. All right, so that's a positive correlation. Now let's take a look at another correlation. You can have the exact opposite, like a teeter-totter. You can have a correlation that is a negative correlation. And the, num the number will be preceded by a negative, of course. And in this particular case, this is the second type of correlation, uh, let's see, let's take a look at uh, unemployment rates by state. 
and college graduates by state. And this is all based on rates, it's not based upon absolute so that a small state will stack up next to a large state just fine when we do it based upon rates. So we're going from low unemployment to high unemployment. We're going from low college graduates per state to high college graduates per state. Now let's make a prediction. The higher the percent of your population is college graduates, what should happen to the unemployment rate? Should it go up or should it go down? Well, let's make the hypothesis, and we don't know that until we test it, but let's make the hypothesis that the higher percent of college graduates you have in a state, the lower the unemployment rate. So that's our hypothesis. And that would mean a negative correlation is what we're predicting. So we already know that uh, if we can find, for example, a state that has a low college graduate rate and a high unemployment rate, how do we find its place? Well, we simply crisscross those dots again, right? We can know we can find a, a state that has a high college graduate rate and a low unemployment rate. We crisscross those lines and we get that dot. And when we fill in our dots, you'll see the exact real dots here. I'm real free with how I make my dots here. I'm not concerned with detail, kind of like Bob Ross plate painting a tree, I guess. And when we circle it, we find that the pattern is in this way. When we put the regression line on, we find that the average regression line comes out like this. Notice it's just the opposite of the previous one we did. Notice this shows us as unemployment goes up, what happens to college graduates? They go down. As college graduates go up, what happens to unemployment? It goes down. We have a negative correlation. In this case, our R value is 0.436 and our p-value, our probability, is 0.001. Now let's test our hypothesis. Our hypothesis was as college graduates went up in a state, the percent of people unemployed would go down. That's a negative correlation. We get a negative, notice there's a negative sign here, negative 0.436. So there is a negative relationship like a teeter-totter as college grads go up and unemployment goes down. Does the data go in the direction we predicted? Yes, it does. But can we accept that hypothesis yet? No, we can't. We have to look at what? We have to look at the p-value. The p-value, is it less than 0.05? Yes, it's less than 0.05. It's 0.001. So now our data went in the direction we predicted, and the p-value is less than 0.05, so one time out of a thousand studies would we predict to be able to find this relationship by chance. In other words, my goodness, 999 times out of 1,000, we would find this relationship if we study states. Now notice we don't use the R value directly in computing the hypothesis test. We just look at it and say, you know, that's a moderately strong relationship. Okay. So now we've had a positive correlation that's been plotted on a scatter plot. This one is a negative correlation plotted on a scatter plot. Let's look at an entirely different situation where there's no relationship between the variables. And you'll be able to see this right from the start. And this one's a little corny if I remember my data correctly here. Um, let's look at uh, the percent of people by state who say they have no religion. And that's an interesting variable. So the higher you go up here, low would mean a lot of people say they have religion. Uh, high would mean a lot of people say they have no religion. And we're going to plot that by pickups <laughs> per thousand population, per hundred thousand population. We're going to go from a low percent of people who have pickups to a high percent of people who have pickups. And when we, we do our scatter plot, we just get random dots. And you'll see the exact one here in a little bit. And you'll notice we can't easily draw a line or a circle that goes like the negative or a circle that goes like the positive because these dots are just all over the place. When we do our regression line, we find a regression line that's like that. That means there's virtually no relationship or a neutral relationship between the two variables. There's no relationship between percent no religion and percent of people that have pickups in the society. Let's look at our data specifically. Our R value here, our Pearson's correlation, is 0.030, and our P value is 0.421. In other words, out of a thousand studies, we would find the probability of this distribution of things 
421 times by chance. And of course, if we had some reasonable finding, we'd reject it on that basis alone. But we neither have a prediction that as pickups increase, percent of people with no religion increase, nor the opposite. That's called a neutral scatter plot. Okay. All right, to summarize, without using specific data. What does a scatter plot with positive correlation look like? Regression line that goes from lower left to upper right, that's a positive correlation. Okay. What does a negative correlation look like? When you do your regression line, you get the spattering of dots. You have it going from upper left to lower right, and that's a negative correlation. And then finally, the last one we did was neutral or no correlation, and that's based upon just a random scattering of dots, and you don't get any real pattern. And when you do your re regression line, you get something that's relatively horizontal. So that, in a nutshell, is correlation in the use of Pearson's R to test some hypotheses. Thank you.